questions now. Thank you um, for uh, we start also the recording. Um, and uh, without further ado, Sergio, I will just pass the mic to you so that we can go through the rest of the program today. Um, towards the end of the program, we will have discussions with our reactors who uh, see uh, they are already online as well. Thank you. Thank you, Dina. Let me see. So we have a question uh, before we start. Good morning. I have a question. This is from Juan Andres uh, Linares. Um, I was looking for yesterday presentation, but I couldn't find it. Could you tell me where I can download it? Um, I don't know, Rafael or Roit, if you have the Zoom recording that you can send, put um, the link in the um, uh, can, can chat. Can you hear me? OK, let's continue. Yeah, let me just simply, because I don't know what has happened to my screen. And now I cannot find the, now, OK. So I'm going to share my my screen. Uh, let's see if it is this <coughs> one. Yes. Okay. Um, let me open this one. So as I'm going to be sharing from one screen to I, I'm not going you, to put it you should interest. also have received a link to download a presentation for that is going to be useful for today yeah okay so so the main idea of of the session today is uh, to see how we can uh, prepare uh, input files for Selena um, um, run a uh, seismic losses scenario uh, I have chosen Philippines because, as uh, Dina mentioned yesterday, I am currently working on on uh, Erasmus Plus uh, project uh, focus on several uh, Asian countries. So the the project is is uh, called GeoDR, Geomatic for Disaster Risk Reduction. You can see this is the the, the web page of the of the project. And uh, it, it is involving some uh, Pol Polish university, the some universities from Philippines, uh, from Malaysia, from Cambodia, uh, the University of Alicante, also a university for 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 Greece. So uh, I thought that it was going to be a nice uh, example of how to implement Selena in one of these these countries. That's, that's what I chose, uh, Philippines. This also will be uh, like a training for, for these Asian universities. So uh, as I told you yesterday, uh, if we think maybe, about... Sorry to interrupt, Sergio, maybe yeah. you can put in uh, slide mode. And uh, if can be, can can it is not good as, as it is um with the now we see you your full slides uh, rather than the slide mode but anyway as as you like yeah i mean it's because i'm going to be changing from one uh, screen to another and, and okay. in order not to be closing the presentation and open the presentation okay that's great that's great so so Selena can be can be used in in two modes, the standalone version for all the people who doesn't have a MATLAB, and and the MATLAB version. So that's why if you are going to work with the standalone version, then you need the two executable files which are in the shared folder that I I provide you yesterday. I have to say or I have to apologize if someone download these files yesterday because I realized this morning that when I compiled the files, one of the libraries was not included in the compilation. So if someone uh, download the files yesterday, they are not going to work. So, so they need to uh, download everything again before, before trying to, to run Selena. 
And the most important is that uh, this uh, app installer is uh, executed and, and installed in, in the PC. And this executable is copied to the uh, Selena input files folder. We will see later when, when we run it because the, the main of the problems that are when people is trying to use Selena is because they, they are not copying this file to the correct folder. So, so that's why they are, they are making uh, many mistakes. And if you are working with the MATLAB version, then it's, it's more easy because you, you have the, the Selena MATLAB script which has to be added to the MATLAB path. I, I will show you also, also later. And of course, you will have the, the Selena input files folder, which has to be, of course, the working folder in, in MATLAB. So as I told you yesterday, if we go to the shared folder, so uh, you are going to work with the Selena version seven. It's, it's still a beta, but I think that the most of the software is working fine. So uh, I think that is also a good idea that you test it and you provide me with errors. So you will see that always will be a some folder with a sample input file for each one of the uh, different ways of uh, taking into consideration the grow motion, deterministic, uh, probabilistic, or shape map, and, and real time. Uh, as I told you, you will have the folder with the manual and the installation. So this is just a small video and, and the manual in PDF. And this is the folder with the uh, application installer and the Selena executable. And the rest of the file are just simply the M scripts that, that you can just simply check all the methodology that this is inside. You can change what you want. You can improve it if, if you want it. So as, as I told you, if you download uh, this yesterday, please do it again, because uh, there was some, some mistakes in the, in the files. So the, the second thing that we have to take into consideration is that you will see also in the in the examples of the input files that depending if you choose a deterministic scenario, uh, the command to run Selena will be always Selena D. Uh, and then uh, Selena will need uh, an earthquake because it's, you are going to run a, a, a deterministic query scenario, which will be in this input file. Uh, you will need a grow motion prediction equation will, will be indicated in this input file in attenuation.txt. And of course, you will need a, some soil files, which will be the coordinates of your geo units with the PS30, the, the, the slope, and another information that we will see also later. Uh, so with all this information, the using the ground motion prediction equation, the slope of the relief, the PS30, uh, Selena will, will obtain the PGA and the spectral acceleration at each one of the, of the G unit, which will be used later for, for the damage. In the case of using a pre-computer shape map, for example, a PSA shape, the, the command will be always Selena P. And then we will need, oops, sorry. Uh, we will need uh, shake files txt with the shake center. We will see it during the example. And as this is really just simply a, a values of PGA and spectral accelerations at rock. Then uh, Selena, what we'll do is to use the, the slope values and the BS30 to amplify this uh, uh, pre-computed shape map. So at the end, you will again have the, the uh, topographic amplified and soil effect amplified grow motion for computing the damage. And saying the same if you are using the near real time uh, shape map. So the command here will be Selena R, and uh, instead of shape file, you will have a real-time file indicating which is the grid 
with all the values of uh, spectral acceleration or, or acceleration. And here, what you will need is just simply a soil file, but this is this is not really a soil file. This is mainly the latitude and the longitude of the geo units in which you want to represent your your chain map. And uh, because what Selena is going to do is just simply to compare from the grid to the PGA values on and spectral acceleration values for each of the the geo units. And here it is supposed that nothing has to be amplified because you are getting this uh, shape map from, from instruments. So they are just amplified. So in, in any case, in our example, we will focus on, on the second term on the pre-computed shape map for, for Philippines. And regarding the Damas comp probability computation method, uh, this is mainly represented by uh, this vulnerfiles.txt. Uh, which can include uh, the capacity and or the fragile, fragility, depending on the on the method that we are going to use. For example, as Abdel Ghani explained yesterday, if we are, if we are using a spectral displacement uh, method, then our vulnerability file or vulnerable files uh, should have a capacity and fragility function. But if we are using uh, a spectral acceleration base, uh, damage probability, then we only need to provide with the fragility in terms of uh, spectral acceleration. Or if we are going to use a PGA base, uh, we only have we only need the PGA fragility in order to to get the damage. <clears throat> you will see in the in the example folder that always I have a name it. Uh, each of these template uh, ASCII file with a with a label that you can identify. So if if you know that you want to run an spectral displacement pane, then you know that, that you have to use this vulner uh, uh, SD base DXT as a template for for creating your vulner files .txt. So so it's more or less one once you get used with the manual, you also understand perfectly how to create your your input files. And uh, we are going to focus on this one, on the spectral acceleration-based uh, vulnerability models. So for example, this is uh, how it looks like a capacity curve input file. We are not going to use it, but simply that you know that it contains the, the name of the capacity curve. So it, and each file of the capacity curve contain displacement and, and acceleration in, in international units. It contains the elastic damping for each one of the model building types. It contains the, the GIL point, the GIL displacement, and the GIL acceleration in international uh, system units. Uh, as Abdel Ghani explained yesterday, you can choose between bilinear capacity curve or multilinear capacity curve, just simply indicating here zero or one. And I always try to, using this symbol, it, this is commented, so Selena is not reading uh, this last column, which is the level of the model building type, but it can help you to know exactly which uh, means each one of the of the words of your input files. Uh, so the same can be more or less uh, seen when you are checking the fragility curve input file. So uh, what we are going to represent is a. Uh, a standard cumulative, uh, normal cumulative distribution function. So we need to provide a median uh, intensity measure for each damas state and a standard deviation for each uh, damas state. So depending if you are using the spectral displacement, that means that your median and beta will be related with uh, the spectral displacement and, and you will have uh, one pair of columns, one media and one beta four. This is, will be a slight damage, moderate damage, extensive damage, and complete damage. Uh, this will be the median uh, displacement, and this will be the beta, and the units will be meters. And if you are using a spectral acceleration or PGA fragility functions, then uh, the, the format will be uh, nearly the same. So you will have the spectral median 
and, and the beta for, for slight damage, moderate damage, extensive damage, and complete damage. But additionally, uh, you will see from Martin and Silva that when you are using a spectral acceleration fragility function, usually they provide the period of the spectral acceleration. So you also indicate here, which is the period of each one of these fragility function. Uh, for example, if you see here, I, I have also added a PGA fragility function here, just simply putting the period of zero. So Selena will understand that this is a PGA fragility function. Uh, so this is a, more or less like a, a, a small introduction about what we are going to do now. Now we are going to, to start preparing the, the Selena input files. And uh, so this is more, more or less uh, related to what I, let me just simply try to find. So do you remember that, that yesterday we were speaking about trying to download some information for, for Philippines, try to plot some of them on, on QGIS, trying to check the fragility curves from Martin and Silva. So what I'm going, what we are going to do now is more or less to to check what we have about that and, and, and how we can create the the Selena input files. I mean, I have to tell you that when I uh, made this example, it took me more or less uh, two days before uh, two days uh, in creating the input files. So is uh, you can understand that in two hours it will be difficult that each of one uh, get all the input files, but at least the most important is that you understand how we can create it. And then you can play later and, and I will also share the, the input file so you can check it later if uh, you get the, the same uh, uh, input files and, and the same results. So let me try to go to... Uh, here. So I have created a, a folder in my computer, which I have called just simply raw data. And I have been uh, copying here all the information that I have been downloading from the web pages that I told you yesterday. So for example, the, the first one was the information related with the with the administrative regions in Philippines, that is this folder, Philippines regions. So uh, I got it, it's, it's, as you can see, it's a shape file called regions. And uh, if you plot it into a QGIS, let me take this out. So this will be the, the results of, of the region. So uh, you can see that uh, Philippines is a very big uh, island. Uh, so I think it's, it's more or less uh, nearly 2000 kilometers uh, in the north direction and, and nearly also 1000 kilometers in, in the west direction. So it's, it's really a, a big area. And uh, you can also go to your uh, uh, attribute tables. Sorry, that, that's all what you see in Spanish, but if you are working with quizzes, you, you will know what, what I'm doing. So in the attribute table, you can see more or less the properties of this uh, shape file. And you will have the name of each one of the region. Uh, you will have something which is quite interesting, which is, the administrative code that they have given to each one of, of this region. And this is very important because uh, once we create our input files uh, or we obtain our output files, if we have a common column with these uh, shape files, later we can make joins of our results using this common column. So at the end, you will see how I'm going to try to create the output files in order to be plot using this column as a join. Uh, so this will be the, the first things that you always have to do. You decide in which region are you going to run Selena. 
And, and yesterday I remember that someone uh, asked about uh, if it, it was possible to run Selena building by building. And I mean, Selena hasn't uh, got any, any uh, how can I say? It? I mean, you can use as many geo units as you want. So you can define that your geo unit is as here, each one of the region of, of Philippines, but you can decide that your geo unit is, is each one of the buildings in your municipality or in your district. So the only, the main problem will be that usually your input file will have a row for each one of the geo units. So if you have 1000 buildings, that means that you will have to create input files with, with 1000 rows. So that's the main difficulty, but Selena will run uh, independently if it is building, if it is district, if it is regions, it's just only a question of the time that you need to, to use in order to create your, your input files. So that was the first uh, input file that, that we always need. Uh, then I also told you to download the, the probabilistic semi-hazard map for Philippines. This is the folder that I got. And uh, of course, I got this from a free page from, from this uh, Volcanology and Seismology Institute from, from Philippines. You can see the, that they have the input file as KMS uh, set for, for Google Earth. Uh, they also have PN, PNG, which are uh, just simply an image. And you can see that they have a spectral acceleration math uh, at three seconds for a return period 500 years on a stiff soil, which is rock. And it is for three seconds, one second, 0 0.8, 0 0.8 seconds, 0.5. Open two, and also it was PGA, and somehow that I don't have it, the PNG, but it's also PG, PGA. Uh, so what I told you is just simply, I mean, if you simply draft, drag and drop these files into QGIS, you will have it represented. I, I have it here, as you can see. Let me just simply put this a little bit. So all of these are the, uh, uh, probability semi has a map. You see this this one is the PGA. I can just simply click here and we can see the the ISO acceleration lines of PGA for, for the whole island. I mean uh, now the thing is that uh, you will see that in, in we have to create a file which is called shake center and this shake center has to contain the PGA and the spectral acceleration for each one of our uh, geo units, for each one of our regions. Uh, of course, if we have the information in this format, it's not so easy. What I have done is just simply to look a little bit, which was the, the biggest contour and, and take one of the values. Uh, if you are working in your country, for example, the best would be just simply to ask to the authorities to provide you with a, with a grid file or a raster file of, of this uh, probability semi has a map. So you can, for example, for each one of, of your regions, take the, the, the mean or the median value or the maximum value of what you prefer. So here, as it was just only an example, uh, what I what have done is just simply to go one by one, uh, getting close to, to each one of the, of the regions. And, and say, okay, for example, in this region, I for, this is 0 0.3 and this is 0 0.4. So I'm going to take 0.3 uh, for, for all this part, something like that. We will see later the, 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 how, how we made the, the input files. So this was for the probabilistic semi hazard map. I didn't write it in the in the slide, but the other important thing was the the PS30. So I have here a folder with the global PS30 map that I downloaded from the U USGS. Uh, same. I mean, this is a, a GeoTIFF map. It's a raster that I can just simply uh, drag and drop to to QGIS, and I will have this map. Here. 
So this is the global BS30 map that I told you yesterday. So you see that the BS30 goes from nearly 200 to 800. And let me just simply zoom to the, oops, sorry. It was a very big zoom. Let me take the, so this is because it's global, but I can just simply now, just simply go here. Okay. So, so, so you see what I told you. So, I mean, you have more or less for each one of the regions, you have a distribution of BS30. And uh, of course, as they are very big regions, they are a lot of uh, heterogeneity. So, I mean, the best will be to, to create your units in which the soil condition are more or less the same, but if at the end you have to use this uh, geo unit with this site, you can choose between the, the maximum BS30 or the median BS30, or even to create uh, two different uh, uh, values of BS30 and give a weight to each one of them. It's, it's, it will be just more or less what, what you prefer to, to do. So that was another one, the BS30. And then we have the exposure. And the exposure, as I told you, the, the good thing is that the global airport model has uh, created a big database. So I download for Philippines the, the exposure data uh, compiled by the global airport model. And, and it's divided in commercial, industrial, and residential. The ASCII file, CSV. Uh, we are going only to work with the residential, just not to, not, not to complicate too much the, the example. And, uh, so, so if you see this CSV, just simply an ASCII file with the longitude, latitude, the ID, the name of the region, the occupancy, the taxonomy according to the global equi model, the number of building, uh, the build area, and the population during that. So this is what we are going to, to import to, to Excel and make some dynamic, dynamic tables that I will show you later. So that was another thing to download. Uh, regarding the fragility functions from Martin and Silva, I think that I have it here and I don't make the folder. No, I don't make the folder here. Anyway, it's, uh, I have here the paper. So, so you can see more or less uh, what they do. This is uh, the development of fragility and vulnerability model for global seismic risk analysis. And as I told you, they provide, uh, come on, how is this going? So this is explaining what they have done. And they provide, uh, here you see, uh, they provide the fragility parameters. In this table, they only provide the fragility parameters for Masonic building classes. In the, and this is the, the, the median and, and the beta. And you see this special acceleration for 0.3 seconds or a special acceleration at 0.6 seconds. But in the in the GitHub folder, uh, there are many more. So uh, maybe we can go from here. Let me just simply copy. So, so this is what I what I told you. So if you go to fragility curves, then we have for each one of the taxonomy developed for, for the global equine model, we have the fragility function. So we can just simply click any of them. And um, they provide, for example, this is for PGA, slight damage, moderate damage, extensive damage, and complete damage. The main problem with this uh, database from, from Martin and Silva is that uh, here in the GitHub uh, web page, uh, they not provide the median and the beta, they provide the continuous function. So you have to create just a small script in, in MATLAB to fit this continuous value to a log normal cumulative uh, function to get the median and, and the beta. And, and it, this is not too complicated. So, so I did it and I have obtained the median and the beta for, for some of the curves that we are going to, to use. So this is also down here. Uh, 
and the rest was to check the uh, example input uh, file. So if we go here, and uh, once you uh, download the, the Selena files, my suggestion is always to use one of the example input folders. For example, I'm going to use this example input files prop specific. Uh, here is uh, a lot of input files. And the idea is that you somehow modify these input files in order to create your example input file prop specific for Philippines, for example, which is the one that we are going to, to work. So my suggestion when, when you do that is that what I always uh, used to do is I create, uh, what is down here? I create an Excel file, which is going to be my template for Selena. So I made an Excel file called Selena template for Philippines. Then I open the template and see, uh, my first uh, sheet in the in the Excel file is called Exposure Rest Philippines. And here what I simply do is just simply to import uh, the CSV that I downloaded from the global equipment model. So you see exactly the same information, longitude, latitude, the ID, the name, the occupancy, the taxonomy name, the number of building, the structural, the bill area, so the, the structural bill area and the population during during night. So uh, first, what I have done is just simply to using this uh, tool from Excel, the, the, the dynamic tables, I have simply said, okay, let's try to make a dynamic table it, with the number of buildings. So if you use Excel in order to do that, uh, uh, I, Think that probably you are more or less uh, uh, have worked with with uh, dynamic tables, but it's uh, uh, let me just see is here is uh, yeah. So it's just simply that when you create your dynamic table from, from one uh, Excel sheet, which is a table, you select what you want to summarize. So I indicated, okay, put just simply in one, in one uh, um, like a row, the name, uh, the, uh, so it, if I, what I have done is just simply, you see, the columns will be the, the taxonomy, the rows will be the name of the region, and the value that they are going to summarize is the total number of buildings. So with this uh, easy computation, I have just simply a dynamic table, which will contain the number of buildings in which one of the taxonomy that uh, the global equipment model has, has selected. And here is the total number of buildings. And this is quite fast, so you don't have to, to make many efforts in doing that. Uh, the same that I have done with the number of buildings, I can do it with the bill area. So I also can have a dynamic table with all the bill area in the different uh, taxonomies for each one of my of, of the regions, which I have here. And the same, I can do it by the uh, uh, total population. So I, I also can uh, create a dynamic table containing the, the population in each one of the, of the taxonomies. So, so that means that uh, with these three uh, dynamic tables, I can start creating the, the first input files. So uh, one of the most important input files for Selena is this one, which is called numbuild.txt, which contain, as I told you, 
uh, the number of buildings in each one of the taxonomies. So what I have just simply is because later what I'm going to, to do is just simply copy and paste each one of these to, to ASCII. So what I have done is just simply to uh, copy and paste here the number of buildings uh, to give a code to the geo unit, which is related with the label that we saw in the administrative code. Uh, in the blank space to add a zero that doesn't create any problems with the uh, uh, Selena. And also at the same time that, that you know you have created this simple file, you have to realize that each one of these columns correspond to one of the input files in Selena, which is called occup NOB with a number. So if there is 36, 33 columns here, you have 33 occup NOB TXT files also. And additionally, you can also, uh, yeah, you can copy from here directly or, or make a small template like I did here. So this column, correspond to this column here. Uh, exactly the same, I did it with the build area of txt. So I, from the dynamic table, I copy and paste. I give a code for the DGU unit related with the label in the administrative code. And same, in the blank space, we have the zero and uh, the numbers in, in the rest. Uh, the same with the population. So I, for each one of the geo units, I copy the total population. And the only thing, I mean, this is this is the uh, input file which is called population.txt. So the only thing that you have to know is that if you are going to use the basic human losses, human losses models, the only columns that you uh, need to, to write is this column population and this column householders because uh, later they will use these ratios here written in pop time dot, dot txt to compute the daytime population, nighttime population, um, people and, and in the residential area when, when they are commuting. And if you are going to use the HASUS uh, human losses model, then you have to complete all these uh, input files. But in our example, we are going only to use the basic model. So we only have to worry. Although I have created the, the input file with everything, it will only be using these values and these values from here. And as these householders are going to, to be used for uh, the people who need shelters, usually they, they are more or less the same as the the population living in the in the in the region. So the next input file will be uh, this uh, OCC MBTP files, which you can see here is is also obtained from from the from the dynamic tables. Uh, that was the dynamic table with the bill area. So what I only do is just simply, you compute the total bill area for each one of the G units, which is here. And, uh, sorry, it's not the bill area, it's, it's the population. And, and, and you simply uh, write the numbers in terms of percentage. So this will be, is adding one. So this is the, how the population is is uh, occupying the different taxonomies for each one of the of the geo units, and uh, so you will have five files. So the first one is the residential. So as we are assuming that everyone is in residential building, only this file has a percentage. And the other files from two, three, four, five, uh, they are all zero because we are assuming that all the population is in residential buildings. 
So all the percentage are here. Uh, the next file will be the Shake Center. And in Shake Center, as I told you, you have again the ID of your geo unit, the latitude and the longitude, the soil type according to, to the, the codes. So one, I think it was rock and, and it was going down to four, which is soft soil. Yeah, this is the PS30 that we ask, have assigned to each one of the geo units. Um, and you have co columns for the geometry, if it is a flat geometry, a hill, a slope or a canyon. Now only it's working flat and hills. Uh, this is the place in the relief. So if it is in the top, in the middle, or in the two, and currently it's only working in the top. And uh, this is H and L to compute the, the slope. And this is the type of crest, if it is sharp or if it is soft. Uh, in this example, we are not going to include uh, topography. So we are only going to include BS30. So we avoid this, this value. The, and this is what I told you. Look that I have copied here in GIS, the PGA, the PGA and the spectral acceleration from the probabilistic semi-hazard map for each one of the regions. And uh, this is the corner period of the response spectra, uh, which is, I mean, I used to put it zeros, so it's automatically obtained uh, from the uh, Bomber 2006 relationships, I think. And this is the uh, level with the names in, of, the, of the regions. So this is how the, the shape maps is included in, in Selena. Now we have a input file, which is the fragility functions. So I have combined here the fragility functions with uh, many, many other information. So, so you see that for each one of the taxonomies, uh, we have the media uh, and the beta for each one of the Damascus state, which are these, these values that I have here. You also have the period, and, and uh, you have the a level for the, each one of the taxonomy, just, just to know each one uh, is, is each one of the rows. Uh, you will need a collapse rate. And the collapse rate I used to, to, to use is, I don't have any other information, the, the ratio is given by Hasus. Uh, this will be the label, just to know exactly more or less which uh, fragility function I'm using. Uh, this is uh, the, the reconstruction price that I have assumed for each one in order to get the economic losses. This is uh, dollars per square meter. And now you have uh, files with the ratio for, for each one of the severity injuries. So when you have a building which has complete damage and have collapse, these are the ratios for each one of the injuries. Uh, the same for complete damage, the same for extensive damage, for moderate damage, and for slight damage. And uh, these ratios I have taken directly from, from the Hasus manual. So the Hasus manual is saying for severity one, severity two, severity three, and severity four. So if the building has complete and collapse, this, these are the, the damage ratios for, for the human losses. So this is the, the collapse rate, as I told before. And these are the injury files that I have told before, ready to be copy and paste in the, in the ASCII file. With the economic files, they are named ecfiles.txt, and, and you need one for the new construction, one for the complete damage, one for the extensive damage, for the moderate damage, and for the extensive damage. And, and this is the, the new construction is what we call the reconstruction. This is something that you fix. A complete damage will be this value, the, the reconstruction, and the extensive damage will be the 50% of the complete damage. The moderate damage will be 10% and the slight damage will be 2%. This percentage are also taken from, from Hasus. And also Hasus provides you with some ratios in order to, 
uh, compute the, the structural and not structural de debris for each one of the taxonomies. So I, I took it all these values also from, from Hasus, from debris one, from debris two, and from debris uh, three. So these are tables taken directly from, from Hasus. And the last input file is just simply a header that you have to create to, to write it into the output file so easily can, can understand what is uh, written in each one of the output files. So let's check how this is done in the in our input file. So, so this is our example. And each one of these uh, uh, sheets that we have seen in the Excel, as I told you, what I have done is just simply copy and paste here. So I'm going to make a like something like this. Something like this. So uh, you see, using the, the Excel, you simply copy and paste, and you are going to have all the input files that you need for these are the headers. And uh, this is the injuries, the new construction, and the number of buildings, the density, the pop time, population, the fragility. So everything is, is uh, written here. So once you, and if you follow the manual, and if you use the, the example input file as a template and try to put it always in Excel, uh, the chances of getting errors decrease a lot. So always try to, to do something, something like that and keep just looking the manual if you have any doubt on what you have to, to write. So once you have all this file, then you have the two options. So, uh, you have the option of Selena, of, 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 uh, sorry, of uh, MATLAB. So if, if uh, you are using MATLAB, you have to uh, take care of two things. So the first thing is that MATLAB has a, a place in which you set the path, and you have to be sure that in, in this path, you have at the folder, Selena, 7.0 M files B3, because I have there all the M MATLAB scripts. So it has to be uh, written here, save and close. And that means that you can run Selena from any working folder. And the second thing that you have to take into consideration is that your working folder has to be the place in which you have your input files. So you see in sample input files from a specific Philippines. And here we can see all the input files that we have seen before. And there is one input file which is uh, uh, indicating Selena what type of uh, one are you going to, to make. So this cp file.txt, you see in the first row is, is written uh, what means. So, the first number indicate what type of re-estimation are you going to do. So if you are going to run ST base, you write one. If it is ST base, you write two, which is what we have written. If you are going to use PGA base, you write three. I mean, the performance point computation method can be N2 method, MADRS, or IDCM. If you are using the ST base, you choose one of these three. If you are running SA base or PGA base, there is no performance point. So it doesn't matter what you write here. I wrote one, but it doesn't matter. It, it's just simply, you are not using it. So the next number is the type of damage result. So you can get result in terms of square, uh, damage the square area in terms of square meters or damage buildings in terms of number of buildings. So if you write here, Two means number of buildings. If you write here, one means uh, square meters. The next will be the human losses model. So one is for the basic human losses model and two is for the HASUS uh, human losses model. 
So if we write here, one is, is uh, the basic. And the last one, this topography is one for Euro code and two for Italian code, a three and three for the period dependent relationship. That is not written here, but it's also working. So if you write here one, is using the, the topography from, from the Euro code. So the first thing that you have to do is to check if this is uh, well written and if the input file correspond to, to what you have selected here. For example, if, if we are going to run an SA base, the fragility has to be SA base. So um, if you write a spectral displacement, you have to have as input as capacity and fragility. So just only, and then if we write Selena P, then if everything is okay, you will get just quickly some uh, message saying that, okay, you have uh, run Selena using a computer shaking map. You have used the a based real estimation. You have used the local topographic. You have used the number of buildings, the standard human losses, and there is new construction. So uh, there is mean the maturation computation. And these are uh, that everything is okay. Uh, if you are using the, the standalone version, then uh, look, this is my, my uh, command windows, and these are the folders. Uh, I have to go to the this folder, example input files, profit specific Philippine. So I copy, simply copy this, change directory to this file. And I have to check that, uh, I can do this, dear dogdex. I have to check that inside this folder with the, all the input files, I also have the Selena doc X because if not, it's not working. And then I just simply write Selena T, pardon, T, because it's a probabilistic. Then I also run. Yeah, it takes a little bit more, but it's, the results are, are the same. So it's giving you a message with all the uh, information that has been done. And at the end, what has happened is that in your working folder, you will find a folder called output with all the output files. So the things that you have to take care of is that each time that you run Selena, this folder will be already written. So if you want to check the parameters in order to make a new run, the best is to rename this folder. So for example, I have made two runs, one with number of buildings and one with square meters. So after running, I rename it to output number of building and output to square meters. So it is it's not deleted, okay? So I think that uh, here we can uh, stop before the, the small break. Um, uh, after the break, uh, we can just simply start checking the the output files and how to plot some input files in, in Selena. If you have any any question at the moment? Uh, I think uh, there are a couple of questions, uh, um, Sergio, relating to, to logistical issue, I think. Somebody was asking, uh, what are the differences if they have Windows 10 instead of your... Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, the, the thing is that it's just only, I mean, if you have a different operating system, I have not compiled it for Windows uh, 11 because uh, this was the also the operating system that I have now in my laptop. Mm -hmm. If you need another operating system, you have to tell me because I have to uh, compile for that uh, operating system and then I can send it to you the, the compiled version. Yes. The thing is that MATLAB only allows you to, to compile for a specific uh, operating system. So if and you then need, there um, was another question about the version of MATLAB. 
Um, so it seems that um, I think uh, uh, the version that the lady has is uh, Adriana I will, and uh, yeah. you, I, I, I haven't tried. I haven't tried with uh, Malda 2023, but I would say that it has to work because with uh, Malda it shouldn't be any problem. So simply check that uh, you have downloaded the files uh, correctly because as I told you, there were some mistakes yesterday with the files in the shared folder. So download again all the files, uh, check that you have uh, up to the path of MATLAB the folder in which all the uh, MATLAB scripts are and try again. And if you have any problem, just simply send me send me an email. But with MATLAB 2023, I would say that it has to, to work without any problem. Okay, so these are the two questions that I think emerged so far. If there are any other questions, now would be a good time to ask before we move on to the running of the exercise. And we have reshared the link for the Selena files in case some of you have missed it in the meantime. So the, it's in the chat box and you can re-download everything. Any question at this time? Please uh, raise your hand. I will try to see all of you. Um, or just type in the chat, that's easier. If there are no questions, I don't see any raised hand. So maybe we can proceed, um, Sergio. Okay. Okay. Then, uh, as I told you, after uh, running Selena in these uh, different options, uh, I can show you here much better it will be in this uh, mode okay as i as i told you uh, selena create a folder which it which contains all the uh, output files so for example if we check this uh, output number of buildings uh, let me just simply try to sort by well, it's the same. It's similar to this. Yeah. I mean, uh, in the manual, more or less, is uh, written what means each one of the files. But uh, we can quickly check a little bit uh, about them. So, for example, let's forget the, this first one initially and go to this one, D out. So all the D out files uh, contain the damage probabilities. So if we open the quick view, uh, you will see. Uh, so the first row is always the header that you created in order to, because later you can just simply take these uh, ASCII files, import it into Excel, use the uh, space as a delimiter, and you will get uh, column for each one of the of the results. So, so this D out will always have the damage probability. That can be quite useful in order to check if there is something strange in in your results. Uh, these uh, G motion scene uh, files always contain the shake map uh, after the soil and topographic amplification. So. Uh, do you remember that in the input files we provide for each one of the geo units uh, a BS30? So what we have here is the PGA and the spectral acceleration amplified, taking into consideration this uh, BS30 value for each one of the the different spectral acceleration values. So this is quite useful because later we will see how we can just simply make a, a plot, a mapping shape in QGIS with these uh, uh, output files. Uh, more interesting thing be before going to the damage, uh, this 
NOB, number of buildings, city out, contains the uh, number of buildings in each one of the damaged states. So saying you always can import this to, to Excel and you will see there is a lot of minus one numbers. And this is something that are included in the output file just, on, just simply that you know, because minus one means that there is no building. So if, if you see directly zero, you can think that is zero building is a magic. But if you see minus one, that means, okay, this is there is no building in that uh, geo unit. So that's why there is a, a minus one. And the rest will be the number of buildings in each one of the, of the damaged states for each one of the, of the geo units. So there is a performance points uh, output file that will not contain nothing because it's not used, it's always zero. And uh, you have also, you can see here, uh, let's go to this one, for example, HLD uh, injure. This is the uh, injured population at the different hours that you have selected for each one of the geo units. This is the affected population. So you have severity low, severity medium, severity heavy, and severity there. This is severity one, two, three, four for each one of the hour of the of the day. And you have here the results for each one that you can also later plot it. Uh, you have here this homeless. So this is for each one of your units, the, the homeless uh, that you have obtained. What more? You have the, the total injury. So this is the total affected population. So you see, this is total injury, and this total injury is the total affected at two, a 10, or a five, and the three times that you have chosen. And, and you have here the, the different uh, results. And you also have the uninhabitable dwellings, and this uh, is the buildings that cannot be occupied. Here, what we are using is also using a, a ratio. So what we are saying is that the 50% of the moderate damage, the 90% of the extensive damage, and the 100% of the complete damage will be in uninhabitable. So adding all these percentage for the different model building types, you get these, these values. Uh, there is, as, as we have only used one file for each one of the input parameters, there is no median value or there is no percentiles. So there is some output for percentiles here regarding the, the debris, but these are zero. This is simply because I, I haven't changed that in the in the in the Selena code. But in reality, you only have the debris type type one, the debris type two, which is the same as the median debris one and the median debris two, uh, same as this median. So this is simply because in the code. I still have keep that if it is only one file for debris and um, homeless, um, they, they write this, this output. And that you can see this is zero, this, this is nothing. So this is if, if you are checking the outputs in number of buildings, if you are checking the output in, in a bill area, the, the, what you will see is more or less the same the main difference is that the, the out will be the same, the match probabilities. Uh, you can compute economic losses with the bill area. So then here you will uh, find the economic losses for your, for your uh, scenario. So if you see the file, again, you ha will have each one of the geo units and, and the total. It, it's written euros, but it's the, what you write in the header. You can write here euros, dollars, whatever. Uh, and the total economic value. Uh, you see, you have again the ground motion, you have again the injuries, 
but there is two interesting outputs, which is the MDR uh, with a number. This is the mean damage ratio for each one of the geo units and each one of the taxonomies. So this is interesting. Uh, we'll represent this file later because the first row uh, contains the mean damage ratio for each one of your geo units, adding all the taxonomies. And uh, this other one, this NDR dot, this is the total mean damage ratio for the whole region and for the uh, for each one of the taxonomies. So here you can see, for example, this first value means that 0.36, this is the mean damage ratio in the whole country for this uh, scenario that we have run is around 37%. But for example, for this first taxonomy is uh, nearly 80%. Um, for this taxonomy, which I cannot see now, is only 4%. So this, is, this will be the total value, and this will be for the different uh, taxonomies. And also here, you will be able to see the, the damage in terms of the square meters. So this SQMCT out contains all the damaged area in each one of the, of the different damaged states. So at least is, as I told you, we can try just simply that to see if, if for example, I open, uh, let's go here, uh, I can open this one, this number of buildings, just to see that how can, I can just simply select all, control copy, I can go to Excel and say new, we can click here and say paste using the tool, and then I can, you see, I can say space and tabulation, and, and then you can see that it it appears that each one of your header is associated with the one of the columns. So at the end, you just simply check that everything is okay. You say end, and then you can just simply easily to check, okay, for this zero unit, and this taxonomy, well, this taxonomy hasn't got any buildings here, but anyway, it has some buildings here. So you can see that uh, for this zero unit, there is zero buildings in no damage, 2.2 .2 buildings in a slide, 11 buildings in moderate, nearly 17 buildings in Texas and 70, per 70 buildings incomplete. So that way you can more or less check the different geo units and the different taxonomies. Um, and save. And I'm going to show you now how you can use uh, QGIS for, for representing uh, results. We saw uh, previously how we can represent the, the BS30. But what I have also done is just simply, I have a, a let me just simply show what I have done. I made just simply a small folder. So I, in order to, to block the PGA, I simply uh, create this. This is the, the Gmotion file that I have uh, shown you before. So you remember that this was the geo unit, latitude, longitude, soil, BS30, uh, PGA, and the different spectral acceleration. And this was the amplified value. So what I have simply done is to add a new column here uh, with the uh, code, the, the administrative code of, of the, each one of the region, which is exactly the same as in QGIS. Then I have deleted this column and saved this as a, a CSV format, which is uh, this file that I have here. So you see now it's, it's the same, but it's uh, uh, the geo units are uh, with this administrative code and everything is here. And then I have just simply use in QGIS, 
I have uh, go here to layer uh, administration of uh, data sources. And then I can just simply import this CSV. This is a text, a text file. I don't know the English name, <laughs> delimited by text. And, and I have taken the, the CSV. We will do it later with the uninhabitables. And uh, I import it here and join uh, that information with, with the regions and created this shape map. If I choose the, the as a gradle of the color, the, the column corresponding to the PGA, then I have got a PGA map for, for the whole Philippines corresponding to this uh, PSHJ amplified by, by DS30. Uh, the same, uh, I have done it for, for the mean damage ratio. So I created, you see, uh, first I made this Excel with the mean damage ratio. I add the column with the, that I need for, for the join. This is the total mean damage ratio for each one of the, of the J units. And this is the mean damage ratio for each one of the taxonomy. That I, now I'm not interested. I'm only interested in these first two columns. So I have exported this two column as CSV, which is this uh, file that you can see here. And again, you, you have here the, the mean damage ratio for each, each one. So then I import it to, to QBs. I made a join with the regions, and then I got this. This, this is here. This here. Then, then I got this. You see, again, go down this. So here we can have a representation of the mean damage ratio region by region. So I can see that for the the scenario that I have plot, these regions here. In the in the middle and in the south are the one who has a mean damage ratio higher. Um, just as you see how we can do it, for example, for the uninhabitables. Uh, I have created here this uh, file. So so you see, I have simply so you can see what I'm doing. I was this one. No, that was the whole list. It was this one. So, so you see, the Excel had exactly the same information as, as my TXT. But what I have done is just simply to change this uh, first column. We add with the administrative column that I need for, for the join in order to, to make easy the, the join in, in QEs. So once I have done that, I just simply uh, say, save as, as a CSV is here, CSV and uninhabitable CSV, save. Okay, I'll close this. Now here, like this. Now here I have, you can see now I have here the CSP with the format that I need. So then I just simply go to QBs, say layer, uh, data store administrator, CSP, I choose the file, uninhabitable. Uh, everything is, is good. Look that down, I can see that the administrative code is a text and the uninhabitable building is a real number. So I say close. So now I have a table here, you see, uninhabitable. This is a, simply a table. I can open the table and check that everything is correct. And now what I'm going to do is just in order, I mean, what I used to do is just, I try not to over, overwrite this, this shape file. So I simply export 
uh, as uh, I'm going to give a name, an inhabit, an inhabitable field. Uh, I'm going to save it here on the habit table in the folder. So everything is in the same uh, geographical representation system. Um, so I say, okay. So now it's taking a little bit time to save that, if I done it correctly. Yes, it's working. You see here, it's working on creating the this new shape file. So once, so now this new shape file, which is called uninhabitable, doesn't have any information. Only have the the administrative code and and some other information. So what I'm going to do is just simply properties uh, join. I add a join. And what I want to join is the table uninhabitable. Uh, the field which is common is geo unit. And the field which is common in, in my other shape file is this administrative P code. So I say okay. Okay. And now my my shape files has also the information of the uninhabitable building, which is here. I don't know why this is not written. This has to be some mistake in one on, on, on the regions. But anyway, uh, now I can just simply uh, make again. So go to properties, uh, symbology, uh, graduate colors, and I choose the uninhabitable buildings. I classify, and then I can have a color. Okay. So now I have a, a representation in my QGIS or and of the total uninhabitable buildings in each one of the theories. So I can see more or less in which one of my regions the, there are more uninhabitable buildings or, or not. So the, I mean, this is the, the, the good thing with the Selena. So I mean, as all the output files are simply TXT files, you can work with them uh, as you want. I mean, you can use QVs if you want to create maps. Uh, you can use Excel or MATLAB. You want to make additional computation with its output files. So the main concept of, of Selena when we designed it was to do something uh, which can be improved easily. So if you more or less know MATLAB, you can go through the MATLAB files and, and check what we are doing and improve it. Uh, that can be used in any place. And, and you can see, you, you can apply the, the tool in every part of the world. Of course, the results will be uh, more accurate if uh, the data that you provide to Selena is uh, better. But if you don't have uh, accurate data, but you can obtain some uh, proxy data for your country or your region, at least you will have an idea of how the, the risk is uh, in, in that part of, of your country. So I think that with this, uh, we finish this uh, part. Um, before starting with the panel discussion, I, I will also say that if you have any question or, or something that I can uh, explain very sorry that there is so many things that, that we have can explain that I had to be very fast, but um, yeah. Yes, I think the best way would be to have some questions now. It's anybody has some technical questions that wants to uh, put forward. 
even if even if they might seem uh, banal, don't worry, there will be many of us that are thinking exactly the same thing. So please um, be brave and state it. Um, There is a lot of input and output, as you have seen, but it's clearly eventually uh, it's also a very powerful tool that can allow you to really understand um, losses and risk uh, at very many different scales. If there are no questions and nobody's writing in the chat, I would suggest that considering we have been going for uh, almost an hour and a half, we take maybe five minutes of break for everybody. Okay. And then yeah. I will introduce the panel and we can proceed with the discussion. Would that be all right? Yes. And also, Sergio, we give you uh, an opportunity to stretch your leg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So see you, everybody, back in five minutes. OK, see you in five minutes. Thank you.
Hello and welcome back, everybody. I can see Yogendra is online. Arianna, hello. Was, uh, yeah. uh, Dexter, are you? Hello, Yogendra. Hello, hello, Shakyu. How are you? It's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after a long time. Dexter, great. Arianna, I'm not sure if Dominic is back as well. I'm going to send here what's up. It was there a moment ago, but um, it's not back yet. He said that he would certainly be online after 15.30, so we give him a moment still while I'm introducing the rest of the uh, panel. So I will start with uh, Arianna Guardiola Villora. It's a professor of structural engineering at the Politecnico di Valencia. And let's uh, classify her as an end user of Selena. Uh, uh, but she has made extensive use of it. So we, we are really looking into the, the uh, that aspects of the interactions. And I think that will be very useful for uh, the audience. And similarly, uh, Dr. Dexter Law is a professor at Xavier University in the Philippines. Uh, he's basically now collaborating on the Erasmus Plus uh, uh, project that Sergio mentioned earlier. And uh, therefore, he has more insight in the particular case studies that we have seen. And he will be able to comment on Again, the, the, from the end user point of from the, the application points, what is the, how, how then uh, the Philippines will use the, this uh, um, end product. And also the other things that will be interesting here to see are the different scales at which Selena is applied. Um, here come Dominic, I will, I will introduce in a moment. Um, before that, I will uh, introduce Professor Yogendra Singh, he's Professor IT Rarki, and I believe one of the very early, uh, he has collaborated to some of the development of the, the platform, as well as being one of the earliest uh, applications that were, were done uh, last decade, possibly. Um, and finally, Dominic. Uh, Dominic Lang is now one of the director of the Nas uh, Norwegian Geological Institute, but he was before a Norser and he collaborated from a very early stage with Sergio in developing the whole process of Selena and its uh, applicability, as well as uh, uh, making sure that it was uh, disseminated and applied uh, worldwide, as we have seen yesterday from the map that uh, Abdel Ghani has uh, distributed and showed. So um, I think without further ado, uh, the, maybe we can start uh, with uh, um, Dominic to give a little bit of the uh, um, background of uh, why Selena and uh, what was the let's say, hole in the market at that time, and how do we see uh, Selena being applied uh, and continue to be uh, useful in the future? Yeah. Thank you, Dina. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, yeah, um, thank you for the introduction. Uh, it, it's true, I've been uh, being actively and, 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 and indirectly involved uh, with Selena now for almost 20 years, nearly. Uh, Sejun and I, we became very uh, suddenly uh, uh, appointed with each other when I started with NORSA in 2007, and then I was uh, very deeply involved in the further development of, of Selena. Um, the, the reason why Selena was developed was basically um, this, this wave that was created by FEMA uh, um, when they came out with a, with a hazardous version. Uh, end of the 90s, and uh, we realized that um, this this hazard was very inflexible to to accommodate data uh, that was outside of the US and data that was not in the right format as required by this system. So it was very rigid, and we wanted to. At that time, we had a number of projects in in developing countries, 
um, among uh, various countries in Central and Latin America and India and Pakistan and so and, and Central, Central Asia. So we wanted basically to create a system that is that is open um, to any type of inventory data in the world that is open to any um, vulnerability or fragility data that at that time was very, very sparsely available. And uh, hazard state, th these hazardous fragility functions were at that time more or less the, the only um, available functions uh, in the market. And uh, we also wanted to provide a, a system, a software where people, the user was completely independent from commercial software. Uh, which was also, I think, at that time, it was very, even so you could get a, a free version of, of Hazus, you still had to have a commercial version of a GIS system. I think at that time, it was Map Info or ArcGIS that you had to have a subscription for. And, and we wanted basically to, to, to circumvent all these, these uh, restrictions. And uh, one of the successes also at that time was that Sergio has a general physics background where uh, people at NORSA had like this seismological geophysical background. And then I also came in with a more engineering background. So basically all these components that were required also probably to, to build up hazards were probably then also kind of combined and we could basically learn from each other. And then the, the feature that I still think is one of the main uh, success factors of Selena is basically this uh, logic dream computation scheme, where I'm very surprised that nobody else uh, really adopted the system for any other risk, uh, risk software, at least as far as I know. Um, because this is, in my opinion, um, uh, quite the, the deciding factor for um, uh, for the success of, of Selena, basically to um, accommodate these, these uncertainties that you have in any type of input data and basically bring them in a, in a, in a logical uh, framework and, and assign um, uh, uncertainties to each of these branches, uh, as you believe, would reflect the, um, yeah, the, the, the meaningfulness of this respective data. So this was basically um, the success of Selena. And then what we could also basically use, that was a very good coincidence since we had these number of uh, collaboration projects with various institutions worldwide. Uh, there were a number of, of, of students also that could test Selena that were applying Selena for various uh, test cases in, in, in various, um, yeah, regions or cities in these developing countries and uh, through that we we were both able to basically test the applicability of selena but also basically to um, develop uh, input uh, fractions for selena for example vulnerability functions that were developed by some students that were good in modeling or um, some students they were interested in applying uh, the, the the code design spectra of certain um, uh, design codes. All these things, I think, makes the the success of Selena. And even today, Selena is more than a frame. It's more, it's more a framework than really a fixed software. You basically could also, without even interacting with us or the developers, you could basically create your own Selena. You know, accommodating your demands, uh, incorporating your design spectra for your country, incorporating uh, your fr fragility functions. It's basically it's only that that Sergio and Norsa they basically provided this this framework and and uh, basically left it up to the user to to apply it for for his or her demands. Thank you very much, Dominic, to uh, giving us this background. I think there are some open question uh, yet yeah, perhaps, especially for the people that are more familiar with uh, um, loss uh, models and loss platform, let's say, mm. uh, on whether, you know, now that we have the GEM model or other models of this type, whether Selena is still uh, um, a, not just a useful tool, but a very, uh, um, let's say, 
state of the art tool that mm -hmm. people should keep. And you have given some of the reason why. One is that it's completely open. The second one is that doesn't have any uh, preconceived preconceived models of fragility or um, yeah. the, the NGMPs or or any or soils and so on, and you can install your own. Mm. But it might be a good idea to uh, um, hear the point of view of the. Uh, users. So I will start with Yogendra, who has a sort of timeline of using it. Um, and let's see what is his view. So thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor Dina, uh, for inviting me uh, to this workshop. Yes, I was, uh, I have been associated with uh, Selena from the beginning, uh, almost beginning, uh, when we explored application of this in a North Indian uh, city of Dharadun. So we had a collaborative project with uh, Norsar and NGI since 2001. And uh, we started uh, developing risk scenarios for Indian cities. And uh, there we were looking for different alternatives. So we started from there. And after that, it has been applied to several cities. The latest uh, application was in the Guwahati city. And uh, we were thinking of uh, something like a real-time scenario development where the earthquake uh, records uh, as soon as the earthquake is recorded uh, at an instrument station and uh, that is fed uh, to the system and uh, based on the uh, uh, building housing stock data, we can develop the loss scenario. And that loss scenario, almost real time, we can do that. That was something we were having in our mind, although very ambitious, and we are still working in that direction. Uh, then another aspect, which is an offshoot of the same application of Selena and our collaboration with Norsar is uh, that we have extended this methodology to hilly regions. And uh, uh, Secu was also part of uh, that study. So we published a paper on uh, based on the review of past studies. And then recently, one student working jointly with me and Dominic, he has developed a calculator uh, for uh, uh, estimating uh, topographic amplification. So we, is, we are in the process of implementing that with open source uh, software like Selena, in which that risk calculate this topographic amplification calculator will be added and we can apply uh, this framework. I see that the framework is very similar uh, in all these uh, risk calculation software. So that framework can be applied to hilly regions also. Uh, to start with uh, topographic amplification and later on include other hazards like landslides also into it. So I look a great future uh, for this collaboration. And uh, Selena will definitely go a long way. Still, a lot of things are to be done. And I look forward for uh, that collaborative work. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yogendra. And certainly, I think there were many questions uh, yesterday about topographical amplification, indeed. And it is, you know, at the moment, basically the current herrings in respect to uh, loss model. So I think proposing solution to better assess topographic amplifications and towards, let's say, to a resolution and to a scale that is consistent with, for instance, the definition of the geo units, it's a very important uh, element. And, uh, and that comes a little bit the scale of applications of these uh, loss models. And that's where I would like to bring in uh, Arianna because uh, recently, in collaboration with Sergio and also with myself, Ariana have developed uh, an application of Selena to um, historic city centers and to the uh, scale of the single individual building and the scale of the, let's say, the single individual facades of the buildings. So it would, it, it, yet, while yesterday uh, we have seen application, for instance, in Guwahati at the scale of the uh, geo units, where the uh, geo units could include an entire, um, not just a block 
in a city, but a, a, an entire district, or the one that uh, uh, Sergio was developing, was presenting today, was actually, in fact, a, an application at national level. So, Arianna, to you. So, oh, thank you. Thank you, Dina, for the invitation to participate in this panel. And congratulations to Sergio to be so brave to run Selena on air. <laughs> I, I always think it's awful to run something on air because it's going to go wrong. Um, regarding my experience with Selena, as Dina said, yes, we the scale that we used Selena was a really small one. We had an area that was about 30,000 square meters, just 20 blocks. We analyzed um, just 205 buildings. All the buildings were masonry buildings uh, that were built from 1880 to 1939. And uh, more, the, more than 90% of them were listed buildings. So our approach were a different approach in that usually is in the analysis of risk and losses and so on. We decided to use Helena because it's a very flexible tool and so we can tailor the input data uh, according to our required results. And also in our case, because we can integrate it with FAMIVE, because in a previous study, we used FAMIVE to identify the different typologies representative of the sample, the buildings of the sample. Uh, and we identified uh, 14 different typologies and derived the capacity cures and frag fragility functions with the fragility assessment uh, routine of FAMIVE. And then we created this uh, building inventory at the beginning, it was these 205 buildings, but as we had some buildings, some chamfers with more than one facade, and we wasn't able to know which facade was going to be the most vulnerable. At the end, we include all the facades. So the scale was really small because we have 2,097 elements in the end for uh, 2005 uh, buildings. We create all the Excel files as the example that uh, Sergio has, has just shown. Uh, in my case, uh, the main issue was to the definition of the relevant seismic scenarios. I needed uh, Sergio's help for that. I'm an architect. I can understand nearly everything about buildings and city and the history of the city. But well, uh, Sergio was really kind. Um, I think uh, I have to pay him a paella. <laughs> I promise <laughs> him that it was in uh, Corona time. And, and well, in the end, uh, we succeed with the results. And uh, we had what we were looking for. Um, we were able to represent in different graphs and also mapping all the results with a different uh, GIS uh, tool. But uh, well, as a summary, we use Selena uh, in a very small scale, which I think is the difference. We integrate it with FAMIVE. And we were able to analyze the spatial distribution, also taking into account the sensitivity of the results or the variability of our input parameters, because we have some uncertainties. And so we have to check different possibilities. But, uh, and in the end, I think we did a great um, work. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> which hopefully you will be soon able to read about in the Bulletin of Epic Engineering uh, mm -hmm. once it is uh, uh, published. Published, yeah. so, yes. thank you very much, Ariane. Um, yeah. Rather than saying that, uh, that you used it at a small scale, I, I would prefer to think that we have used it at a high resolution, um, <laughs> wow. which is the other coin <laughs> of, 
of the medal, but that really gives the flexibility of, uh, of the applicability of Selena because is because you are applying analytical an analytical vulnerability approach, and because you are defining typology, and for the typology you are defining the capacity curves, and then you are defining the fragility functions through different type of uh, uh, possible um, uh, and way of uh, simulating the spectral um, uh, amplification. So I mean, you can use the N2 method or you can use other capacity spectrum method in order to, to get your performance point. Um, that allows you a, a large flexibility in the uh, objects that you are um, that you are studying. Um, and with that, Dexter, I would like to come to you to because for me, because Selena doesn't just uh, tells you how uh, risk, uh, let's say how much risk there is in the built environment, but also on the consequence that that uh, risk falls economically or uh, for. Uh, the inhabitants and for the people. So uh, can you please discuss yes. that aspect of it? Thank you. Thank you, Professor Dina. You have read my mind. <laughs> okay. That's why. And thank you very much, uh, Professor Sergio. I had the, the, the really the honor to sit with him at one time <laughs> earlier this year, and I had so many questions, and he, he very, very uh, eloquently answered all of them. Thank you. So uh, yes, Professor Dina, my first point is really I am so excited about uh, Selena because uh, the price is not just about the physical, structural uh, perspective, but essentially you know for especially for developing countries the social and the economic um dimensions are being displayed here and that is very important to convince our uh local leaders for example on to to invest on risk reduction than just wait on on these impacts that that could happen so and it, it even has the flexibility as many has mentioned about even daytime, nighttime, or peak hour scenario, and I think this this is really a very added value to to our risk assessment. The second one um, in yesterday's presentation, it was also emphasized about scale and resolution, and we are happy of this flexibility because it is not uh, cheap. No, so it 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 needs resources to do a risk assessment particularly especially doing scenario building and for for us in the philippines this gives us a better chance to at least have an idea even at a coarser or lower resolution as you may say it than doing nothing at all this this give us a very good chance to dive deep later on on areas that are really at a very critical uh, scenario or high risk or high impact in in this case even because we can build on the what what Sergio for example is showing on losses and damages in terms of uh, economics and social. So um, in terms, the, the, I connect this to our GeoDRR project, Sergio. You know that um, this is really an added value, especially for developing countries. Floods, for example, became a bit easier for us because you have that geographics range and span and you can say okay these are flood prone areas but seismic is very very challenging for us to map out or to do risk ass assessment even and this gives us a better chance my third point uh, professor dina is we are so grateful that the example is in the philippines and uh this is very very personal to us and very applicable we, we are very grateful because in the Philippines, for example, there are studies that a particular performance level of a structure indicates also the social profile of the people. And therefore, if we are able to see at this angle where fragility of structures actually reflects the uh, social fragility of our people, then that is one key hope that we can work on that well, other than building the structure, we build, for example, the capacity of these people so that they have better chance in surviving during big catastrophic uh, events, for example. So it, it, 
basically it has given us hope because there is that amount of detail resolution that uh, we can work on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dexter. And I think, I suppose, what is the added value here? It's again, that you can run a first analysis at a lower resolutions and then identify hotspot and then spend your money, let's say, or your resources in investigating more the, uh, the slightly higher resolution for the higher spots and so on, and then progressing that way. Um, thank you. Um, I don't know, Sergio, whether you want to answer something at this point or whether we want to take some comments from the rest of the audience. Uh, maybe Professor Daya, you want to uh, comment on your views? Uh, uh, I find uh, very nice uh, presentations and the demonstration uh, by the <laughs> lecturers. Uh, and uh, Selena is very useful. Uh, and uh, I have seen from uh, study to today, a very nice demonstration and uh, very vast and versatile uh, uh, application of this. Uh, so I think everybody should use for the seismic risk and the loss estimation for the buildings and uh, other applications also. I think this is good. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Dyer. Any other comments from the listeners, the audience? Did you find the, the uh, application today uh, to demanding. I, I may I may add some some comments. I think yes. uh, Selena Selena is a great tool to uh, get involved in teaching of engineers or or engineering seismologists because uh, what usually happens at the university is that people probably only like learn one small component of the whole series of of various computations that are like leading in this to a, to a uh, fully loss estimation. So um, understanding um, how ground motion works, how ground amplification works, even topographical amplification, understanding how design code spectra work, uh, understanding how these fragility functions um, function, uh, uh, like, like how they are constructed. Um, then these various um, performance procedures that are basically included in Selena and that the user can choose of. All these things are very like very intuitive and, and, and illustrate the user what leads to basically the final damage and loss results. So I think this is very, very intuitive and very, very like graphically appealing. And uh, a lot of professors could basically use this components very easily in their in their teaching uh, components to to basically illustrate these these certain things. So I think this is uh, this is the for, the advantage of Selena. It's not a black box. You can even look into the into the code and you can find uh, how things are constructed. So I think this is a little bit maybe the also one of the big advantages compared to other uh, loss computation softwares. Yes, certainly. And I'm just uh, casting my mind back to other uh, uh, um, presentation that we had uh, from last year's on different, uh, 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 on other uh, similar platforms and the, how much more open Selena is with respect to these other, to some other platforms. I think there was a comment in the chat about whether all of this can be shared. Uh, I think Jorge Antonio, uh, maybe you want to comment on this? Yeah, if I you mean, can. Uh, Are you on, still online, Jorge? Jorge, sorry, my, my bad pronunciation. Um, but yes, I think we have, uh, uh, actually Selena has already been shared in a share folder, so you should be able to um 
download it all. And of course, the uh, recording of the meeting will also be shared on our UNESCO uh, page. So uh, um, under the um, uh, learning and, and educational activities. So you will find there all the links that are needed um, and, and Dina, to keep track with this. Dina, I will, I will also upload to the same share folder the input files that I have created for Philippines. So anyone can also take a look a bit, uh, take a look to, to, to those files. So, and, and regarding what Dominic has said, uh, this is something, uh, this is what we pretend also to do in Philippines. I mean, one of the things that I was speaking with Dexter in, in my last visit to, to Asia is that we are going to visit Philippines in 2024 and Dexter is going to visit Alicante uh, in a few months. So we have enough time also to focus on a small uh, city of, of Philippines and try if we can uh, find the correct input files and make like an exercise that they can also use in the future in, in their universities. Yes, certainly. Um, that sounds like a good idea. And you, you saw me a moment uh, thinking because we are doing something similar with Dexter already, uh, mm -hmm. um, looking at uh, schools and, and roads. And so here, here is an opportunity to actually bring uh, all these two activities together and, and visualize some of our analysis on the Selena platform, maybe. And I think somebody yesterday was asking whether Selena can be used for uh, uh, infrastructures as well as for buildings. And then maybe uh, this is one opportunity to just do that. Yes. Um, in principle, there shouldn't be any difference, but of course the issue is that you need to uh, they, you need to, to uh, have the uh, different, uh, um, you need to have, a, 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 first of all, a definition of the infrastructure especially, and then to recognize that different parts can be uh, excited uh, seismically at, the, at different levels and therefore uh, failures can occur. And then you need to understand the, size, the, the system effect on, on, on such. Uh, of such failure rather than the individual buildings. Um, I think, I'm not sure if there are other comments in the chats. Uh, 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 I've seen that Dominic has uh, left, thank you very much. Um, and something about open seas, sorry. Uh, this is not... Um, I think we have already shared the link for the software. Um, also, maybe not related to this, is there a way I can get the recording on application and use of open seas? That to, oh, well, this is certainly not related to this. We will respond to you uh, separately, uh, whoever was the person that asked the question. OK. Um, if there are no other questions or other comments from our panel, um, then uh, thank you all very much for attending. We, first of all, please, uh, thanks very much, Sergio, for your very clear uh, applications and explanation of how uh, uh, Selena's work. And we should also clap for Abdel Ghani, who couldn't uh, be here today. Uh, but he also provided a very good uh, uh, presentation yesterday. Um, and thank you to the to everybody that has linked in and that continues to show interest in what we do. And as you know, we have quite a packed program in the next couple of months, and we will also uh, give you some more information about what is going to happen through the summer and into next autumn very soon. Thank you all very much and have a nice weekend wherever you are and whatever you're going to do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you again, sir. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.
Very well done. I'm sorry that I cannot offer you a cerveza now. <laughs> thank you, Dina. No, I mean, th thank you to you for, for giving me this uh, opportunity. I mean, uh, no, I think it's fantastic. A, thank you for, for taking it on. I think <laughs> it's, impor it's important that people see the, the mm -hmm. power and, the, you know, the, the, the possibility that are there. Um, I think it's a, I think it's a very good, and I'm sure that we will have other uh, connections and, and we can. For sure. For yes. sure. And uh, uh, as I told you, this collaboration with Dexter is, is going so good and, and they are yes. fantastic. So yes, he is ve have... he's very motivated. Yeah. And yeah. Yes. Yes. And we have been working with him for a long time and we continue working with him at different scales. But uh, yes, uh, he's, he's very good in that way. Yes. That's great. Okay, thank you, thank you, Dina. Thank now, you. Now, thank now you it's time, online time for, for shopping. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's run. Friday shopping for the weekend. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye, Sergio.